sometimes it gave an echo chamber, but let's see, okay? So right now, everybody seems that they can hear me okay. Shoba, you can hear me? Okay. So uh, this evening, we're going to review the four foundations of mindfulness. I know many of you, and we've gone over the four foundations of mindfulness uh, uh, on several different uh, occasions, but they're connected with the insight knowledges. And some people hear these different things and they think these things are different, but they're not really different. And so I hope that uh, in this uh, review of the four foundations of mindfulness, that uh, those insight knowledges are part of that but they may not be mentioned specifically uh, when you read the sutta, but so you have to have some understanding of Dhamma to sort of uh, put two and two together and see how uh, these different teachings are really uh, part of one teaching or fit together. So <clears throat> we know the you know, the four foundations of mindfulness is the basis of insight in meditation. And so the first of the foundations of mindfulness is developing a certain amount of concentration uh, and mindfulness of the body. So the, uh, the Buddha's teaching on this starts with the body and it says you should sit down in a, uh, keeping your back straight and uh, and then start paying attention to one's breathing, mindfully breathing in, mindfully breathing out. Now, <clears throat> when that is practiced uh, enough, then the hindrances get gradually uh, weakened, or when one uh, reaches, ideally would reach a state of momentary concentration, or at least when the wandering thoughts have subsided to a certain extent and you've overcome sleepiness, those hindrances are the, the, the things that make it difficult you know, to meditate. And uh, we've gone over the hindrances before, so I'm not going to repeat them now. Uh, but so first the mindfulness of breathing is done in order to bring the mind to the body, uh, to find the body, even the external, uh, you know, uh, part of the body, uh, you know, and, and then the Buddha had us be aware of the four postures and remembering what the body is doing, that you're breathing in, but you're also sitting or standing or walking. So even while you're developing the mindfulness of breathing in between the breaths, or even at the same time, you, you start feeling the body and just remembering that you're sitting also. And, uh, and then you, you start to feel the sensations in the body. And you understand you can contemplate the four elements, all the sensations that you feel in the body are these four elements or the four vibrations of hardness, solidity, fluidity, heat, and movement. Again, uh, you know, I've given longer talks on this, so I'm not going to go into details of that because we'll never get through this review if, <laughs> if I'm going through it. So that's why I ask people to reread, re-listen to the, uh, the previous talks. So anyway, you go through the mindfulness of the body, getting grounded in the body, then puts you in direct contact with the, the pleasant, painful, and neutral sensations that are arising in the body, as well as through things that we may uh, hear uh, and see, smell, taste, and even our thoughts. So the, the six sense impingements are continually bringing up these Vedana, or these uh, feelings. And so we contemplate these feelings and we don't leave the breathing. The breathing is still going on, but at the same time, we can notice feelings arising. Uh, and breathing is one of those uh, feelings too. Uh, and we can contemplate how these feelings are impermanent. 
And then as you're contemplating feelings, the, the, the feelings are what trigger off our thoughts. So all the sensations or feelings that you are experiencing by being grounded in the body, uh, by having developed concentration through the breathing and the mind uh, being grounded in the present moment, uh, you can start to see your thoughts also. So you contemplate the mind. And you understand when the mind is distracted, when it's concentrated, if the mind has, uh, you know, some angry thoughts or deluded thoughts, uh, you understand basically what various states of mind uh, that are coming and going. So, so far you've been contemplating, you've contemplated the body, which helps you to be able to observe the feelings with that same detachment, that kind of onlooking awareness. And then when the thoughts arise from the feelings, you contemplate the, the mental states also. And if you're angry, you understand, oh, the mind has anger in it now. Or if you have a lustful thoughts, desires, you see, oh, the mind has desire now. And you understand how those desires or the anger arises and uh, how it ceases. So you contemplate uh, and understand the various mental states or if the mind is not concentrated or it's concentrated, you simply understand uh, the mental states. And then this leads up to the, uh, the fourth foundation of mindfulness, which is the Dhammanupassana or the contemplation of Dhammas. Now some teachers translate it as mental objects, but I'd prefer to use the term Dhamma. Uh, because it is Dhamma. You can't, there's five categories of Dhamma, the five hindrances, the five aggregates, the five, uh, the, the sixfold sense uh, bases, the seven factors of enlightenment, and the four noble truths. So these are Dhamma subjects. So that's why it's called contemplation of Dhamma. And so even while you've been practicing mindfulness of the body and feelings, you've been dealing with hindrances already. So you're aware of the hindrances of sense, desire, ill will, restlessness and worry, uh, sleepiness, and uh, doubts. And so as you continue to meditate and gain more concentration, these hindrances uh, gradually would become weaker. And so because of that, your concentration improves, uh, your mindfulness improves, the mind becomes very clear and calm. And uh, so the first of these, uh, again, the first category of the, the Dhamma is the five uh, hindrances. Uh, but as I mentioned, you've already been uh, dealing with them the whole time uh, through these first three uh, levels uh, that you've been trying to develop. Now the next uh, stage is the next uh, category of contemplation of Dhamma is the five aggregates. So by this time it's required to have some good degree of concentration. Uh, ideally with the, the level of momentary concentration or access concentration, or at any way, just a good state of clear awareness uh, grounded in the present moment. So you can be able to identify these five aggregates. Ah, this is material form. That means the material vibrations, the body vibrations, sound vibrations, Order, flavor, vibrations, mental vibrations. Uh, these are the, uh, well, not the mental vibrations, but anyway, the, the, the five physical uh, sense vibrations. And that is the form, the aggregate of form. And then the feelings that they produce, we, and you've already been contemplating the feelings in the second foundation of mindfulness. Uh, so the, the second of the five aggregates is the aggregate of feelings. But again, you've already been contemplating form and feelings the whole way through up to now anyway. So it shouldn't be that difficult. 
And then you notice the uh, perceptions, which are the, the mental thoughts and images that come into the mind based on the, the sensory impressions. So the perceptions are the, the names and labels. Let's say if you hear a sound and then you, immediately the idea of Bhante's voice comes in your mind, that's a perception. Uh, and then you, you might think about it, and that is the, the volitional formations or some urge uh, to, to do about it or some emotion. These are all part of the volitional formations. And then the consciousness itself. Uh, so you contemplate these five aggregates as they're coming and going to try to understand how they're all impermanent and their condition. Uh, because and without contemplating that, then it's difficult to go on to the further contemplations. Uh, that's why they're the Buddha had listed all these things in a certain order because ideally they should be practiced in that order because one acts as a kind of a preparation and a stepping stone for being able to observe uh, the, the other ones. And then after the five aggregates is the six senses. So even while you're contemplating the five aggregates, the five aggregates are also the six senses. They're not different groups. They're just different ways of contemplating uh, the mind and the body. Uh, but you see how the senses have a strong pull on our mind. And you understand the fetters that arise between the sense organ, like the ear, and then the objects of hearing, or the eye and, the, and what is seen smells and what is, and uh, the nose and what is smelled. So you contemplate that whatever we experience in any moment is one of the six senses arising. And they arise because of contact and they, uh, they cease with the, when the contact ceases also. So you contemplate the impermanence of these uh, six senses. Now, while you're contemplating the five aggregates and the six senses, uh, then the, the, the fourth of these groups of Dhammanupasana is the factors of enlightenment. And this is where the insight knowledges are, are uh, practiced or where they start to become more clear. So the first of the enlightenment factors is knowledge of, well, is, is mindfulness, actually. So uh, uh, the first enlightenment factor is mindfulness. You've been practicing mindfulness already. Uh, and then the, uh, the investigation of Dhamma is the second one. And so you investigating, understanding all these aggregates and uh, as impermanent and conditioned. And it's like, a, you know, but, you know, this investigation of Dhamma is like a scientist sitting in the laboratory looking down through a microscope and being able to see these subtle movements of the five aggregates and the six senses coming and going. That is the investigation. Uh, and so without concentration, you won't be able to do that very easily. And that's why a lot of people get confused because they have not developed the required amount of concentration. Uh, but anyway, as you're investigating the Dhamma, and this is basically Vipassana meditation, uh, you're developing this understanding of impermanence. Uh, which is what this, the first uh, insight knowledge is the knowledge of rise and fall, seeing how quickly the six sense impingements and the contacts and the impingements arise and vanish, and what, you know, one after the other in a very high uh, speed. Uh, and as you're doing that, you get a lot of uh, joy also as you're investigating 
and seeing this impermanence actually it brings a lot of uh, it gets you you know very uh, you concentrated and uh, happiness arises it gives you a lot of energy so you could go on practicing it's like a scientist uh, uh, conducting an experiment and if a scientist thinks he's getting closer to understanding what he's observing you know he would be able to go you know day and night uh, trying to get to the end of his experiment so the same way when you start really starting to understand the nature of suffering and impermanence suffering and no self you get a lot of energy because it's very very interesting uh, and that makes the mind very happy also and that is increasing the concentration these are also jhanic factors and is helping to overcome doubts uh, so at this same time that you're you're developing these uh, factors of enlightenment that is when these insight knowledges especially the rise and fall you're developing these uh, and this investigation of dhamma is basically going through the uh, insight uh, knowledges of rise and fall and then seeing how things are just vanishing at a very high uh, speed sight sound smell taste touch feelings thoughts consciousness are just arising and vanishing uh, at a very rapid speed and then we went over the insight knowledges this the other week so i'm not going to go over them but the insight knowledges are developed even while practicing these four foundations of of mindfulness so they're intimately connected they're not anything different but you have to have gone through it and at least reach this level of the uh, you know the investigation of dhamma because this is where the insight knowledges are really uh, start becoming more uh, clear and developing the energy to sustain that awareness for long periods of time uh, and you're also developing you're becoming very very concentrated and you're getting the you're 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 even developing the levels of jhanic concentration while you're doing this even though other teachers may say uh, no you can't do that but uh, i think you can't so anyway, but uh, so as you're developing those insight knowledges, you're developing the factors of enlightenment at the same time. Until and you uh, see the danger of, you know, the nature of suffering. You see the danger of being attached to uh, sense desire and and all the things of the world. And that's developing these different uh, insight knowledges and the purification of overcoming doubts your doubts are uh, removed and these uh you know the desire the dispassion the detachment and dispassion for the objects that are coming through the senses and the desire to become free from the ignorance because while doing this you see how ignorance is the real culprit and being uh you know clinging to the sense of self you see how the sense of i uh, clinging to it tightly uh you know leads to you know all of our sort of uh, karmic actions and so on and that's because of ignorance that's because of not understanding the mind so that's why this the the contemplation of dhamma is really you know the most important uh, aspect of the four foundations of mindfulness but without developing or at least practicing the previous three uh, your mind won't be in the state of being centered in the body and have, have been able to endure pains and other distractions uh, to practice effectively the contemplation of the dhamma especially in the higher uh, stages.
through the higher stages of the contemplation of Dhamma or developing these uh, insight knowledges. And that's what I, I wanted to connect uh, these uh, two. And when the insight knowledges are developed and you've developed that, uh, you know, the dispassion, the desire for deliverance, and then the uh, uh, re re reviewing them, and then the equanimity, that equanimity of the seven factors of enlightenment is equal you know, to the jhanic level of concentration, the third or fourth uh, jhana, because that's where equanimity arises from the third or the fourth jhana. And, and equanimity is the last of the factors of enlightenment, because just after that, that is where the, the knowledge and vision of, uh, so as you're developing these contemplation of Dhamma, you understand also, uh, the, the, the knowledge and vision of what is the path and what is the, the not the path. And then knowledge and vision of the way are, are these insight knowledges actually, uh, the knowledge and vision of the way. And after that is the purification by knowledge and vision or attaining the four stages of enlightenment. So that comes at the end and that's equal to contemplating the Four Noble Truths. So the Four Noble Truths is really the penultimate contemplation of uh, the uh, Four Foundations of Mindfulness. It's the last one. Uh, but that that's equals entering the stream. I mean, you can contemplate the Four Noble Truths intellectually, but it's not going to be a very deep level of understanding. It's only when you've developed the four foundations of mindfulness and developed the concentration, and you've developed those stages of uh, insight knowledges that you really understand you're, you're getting to that point where the mind will have its breakthrough, breaking through the self delusion and attaining that first stage of enlightenment or uh, entering uh, the stream. Uh, now I know a lot of this may sound confusing or uh, complicated, and it is. But if you ha if your meditation isn't uh, very deep, and that's why it can only really be understood when one has developed at least a, a high level of concentration and overcome the hindrances and uh, practice for. A, uh, quite a long time, systematically developed the four foundations of mindfulness and uh, understood the five aggregates, the six senses, how to contemplate them and uh, developing those, those last stages of the insight knowledge. So, and <clears throat> And so the, the four foundations of mindfulness basically culminates in understanding the four noble truths. And one only understands the four noble truths uh, in its deepest level when one attains the stream entry. Now, a lot of people don't like to hear that, but I'm sorry, that's the way the Buddha taught it. I mean, you can understand the Four Noble Truths again intellectually and you can have some deep insight, but until you have that first glimpse of total transcendence of ego consciousness and seeing through the illusion of the ego and overcoming doubts about it, uh, then that's when you uh, really understand, uh, when your uh, understanding becomes unshakable. And that's why it's called entering the stream. So that's the culmination of the uh, of the practice of the four foundations of mindfulness. But it's directly tied in with developing the insight knowledges and the uh, factors of enlightenment.
Now, a lot of people say, well, I want to find another way. It's too complicated. I want to, you know, find, you mean shortcut or something. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, you ask somebody else for shortcuts, but uh, the Buddha didn't teach a shortcut. Uh, some other teachers claim to have their shortcuts. Well, go to them. But uh, so anyway, the, uh, you know, at the end of the four foundations of mindfulness sutta, the, the Buddha said, if one develops these four foundations of mindfulness for uh, seven days, one could attain either the state of the non-returning or enlightenment. Uh, no, actually, he, excuse me, I broke. He said, if one practices these seven factors of enlightenment for uh, seven years, one could attain the enlightenment. So it, it may take people seven years to uh, of practicing meditation before they, in developing all of these inside knowledges, it could take the average person that long, uh, you know, unless they're really on a l very long, long uh, retreat. But the way the average person, uh, you know, practices, uh, the, the average lay person practices meditation, uh, then, you know, <laughs> it could take seven years or it could take even longer. But, but anyway, but he said if one practices, you know, uh, depending on how you practice, it could take, uh, you know, just uh, six years, or it could take just five years, it could take four years, three years, two years, one year, it could take uh, six months, it could take three months. And at the end, the Buddha said if one really practiced just for seven days, one could attain never returning or the full stage of the ahamsa. But in that seven days, you would really have to have, you know, before that, have developed uh, some level of jhanic concentration, probably the third or fourth jhanic concentration, then applying that to developing these insight knowledges. And then if you were able to maintain that for, you know, uh, up to seven days, then probably yes, you you could attain uh, the, the stream entry or more. So anyway, this is how the the, the Buddha explained it, and uh, so that's what I wanted to uh, to uh, to again to review, and uh, especially to tie together how the four foundations of mindfulness include. Uh, concentration, and they also include the insight uh, knowledges and developing the factors of enlightenment. Okay? So now uh, I'd like to open it up for any questions. I don't see any chat questions have come into the chat box. And... Uh, no one uh, kind of emailed me questions based on the uh, on these four foundations of mindfulness. Um, so, Bhante, I can ask a question. Um, my question is: What is the difference between the second two? Um, foundations that is that is of the mind and the mental objects the mind and the mental objects uh, the mind is a state of mind so you're just recognizing uh, the mind is confused now or it's clear now the mind mm -hmm. is angry now or the mind is calm now the mind has lust now the mind doesn't have lust now. Let's say you catch yourself thinking about some, you know, sensual desire, especially with somebody else or some, you know, some, you know, especially erotic or lustful types of thoughts or ideas directed towards somebody else. Then you have to recognize that this is a mind full of lust. Just, you know, the facts, right? Okay. 
uh, or if the mind is n doesn't have lust in it, you understand that the mind doesn't have desire in it. Now, lust means any type of desire, even the desire to have an ice cream is a kind of a lust, but normally it's referred to the, you know, the sexual type of lust, which is very strong. Uh, so the, the, the contemplation of mind is just identifying the mental state. Now, the mental objects are basically all of those uh, mental objects that we were talking about, the five hindrances, the five aggregates, the five senses, the six senses, uh, the factors of enlightenment. These are mental objects or also various types of emotions. Uh, so, you know, they're, they're similar. They're similar, but they're uh, somewhat uh, different also. And, uh, you know, even the body has feelings and so on. Uh, so, you know, it's not that all these things are necessarily completely separate. They're, they're connected very intimately, but you can focus and, and contemplate the different aspects of it uh, kind of more prominently, uh, you know, if, if one wants. So whatever is predominating your mind, whatever whatever of those objects is occupying your mind, that's when you contemplate. If a painful feeling arises, you understand this is a painful feeling. Is it a painful body feeling? Is it a painful feeling arising from what you heard? Maybe you don't like something I'm, I'm saying uh, to you and, and you, know, you have aversion. To, okay, that's a, a painful mental feeling or it's a happy mental feeling. Uh, so, you know, you contemplate the various kind of feelings. They're not disconnected from the senses. They're arising with the senses and the sense context. So it's not that these things are different. They're, uh, you know, they're all, you know, really connected. And uh, so anyway, you know, it takes a lot of practice to understand. That. So, so you call the, you call the four the fourth foundation, the contemplation of Dhamma. Yes, but other translators say mental objects. But right, right. I prefer to use the term Dhamma because the, these are categories of Dhamma. The, the, the Buddha mentioned five hindrances hundreds, if not thousands of times in suttas. He mentioned the five aggregates also hundreds of times, the six senses hundreds, thousands of times. The seven factors of enlightenment, many, many, many times. The four noble truths, so many times. These are these are topics of dhamma, and that's what you contemplate. Mm -hmm. That's why I prefer to use dhamma rather than mental objects, because mental objects are kind of it's an obscure kind of you know translation. It's confusing when when you look at the. That's why I asked this question, Bhante, because when you the mind and the mental objects, it seems like it's exactly the same. There is really not much difference there. But when you say dhamma, then it kind of makes it a little bit more clear. Yeah. Hi, Bante. I, I have a question. I wanted to ask you one more time. Um, I, I was thinking about this before. Um, what exactly are feelings? Is it like just the sensations you have, like when you feel an itch or a pain? An just itch is those... a sensation, but your mind regards it as something unpleasant. That's the feeling. The feeling and the sensation are not different. It's the tone of the sensation. It's either a painful one or a pleasant one or a neutral one. Okay, so in this regard, feelings is just the, I like it or I don't like it or it's... it's. Well, that's the reaction to it. First, it's okay. just okay. the feeling itself and then the idea that I don't like this feeling arises or I want to get away from this feeling. That is the the reaction part. Okay, but it's it's just 
pertaining to the physical body right now, like pains or itches or aches or even a, even a mind, even a mental. You have a painful memory that arises, so that memory uh, is a pain, creates a pain, painful mental feeling in you, mm -hmm. or a happy mental feeling if you're happy about something. But it's usually connected to one of the senses also. But it's the reaction to uh, the you know the, the sense impingement. Okay, thank you. Bhante, I have a question about, um, you know, how do you, uh, you know, just uh, would like to know an example when you uh, basically switch yourself for five aggregates and then to the six sensors. Maybe you could expand a little bit on that, if you don't mind. It's not a matter of like, what time are you going to switch? Uh, you're contemplating the five hindrances as they are arising. Uh, if the hindrances are not arising, you don't contemplate them. You contemplate the, the six senses or anything else that's uh, predominantly uh, taking your mind. That is when you contemplate it. But you can do it separately. But once you've understood the five hindrances and have weakened them, the ability to let go of them, then the mind will be able to contemplate the other things more effectively and, and uh, the insights will come more quickly. So that's mm -hmm. why the, the five aggregates was the first of these uh, topics of Dhammanupasana, uh, is to understand how the effects they have on the mind, hopefully to overcome them. But you don't have to wait until they're totally gone because you know they'll get weakened and your, medit your concentration will improve even if they're they're kind of just sporadically coming back. Your mindfulness is strong enough not to get lost by them. And you can still uh, carry on your uh, other contemplations. Because while you're contemplating, developing the, the knowledge of rise and fall, then the, the hindrance, you gain concentration and that also helps to suppress the hindrances. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Wendy. I noticed that uh, oh, okay, I'm going to go to the chat box here because there's two uh, questions that came up here. Uh, can you please tell us how to do basic vipassana meditation? <laughs> well, Vipassana meditation is really developing the insight knowledges. Uh, you know, when we talk about meditation or Vipassana meditation or mindfulness, there's so many different levels of it. And so basic, if you want basic Vipassana meditation, then just practicing mindfulness of the body, mindfulness of feelings, mindfulness of the mind will do for basic Vipassana meditation. And you have to do that first anyway. While doing that, hopefully the hindrances will get weaker. And then you can start practicing what I would call advanced Vipassana meditation, which means starts with the insight knowledges of rise and fall. When you're really seeing very crystal clearly how quickly each different moments of hearing, seeing, tasting, smelling, touching are arising and vanishing at a very high speed. That is the high octane or advanced uh, Vipassana meditation. That's why I call it advanced Vipassana meditation as opposed to basic uh, Vipassana meditation where you're noting things like, oh, uh, you know, pain, pain, or hearing, hearing, uh, you know, doing this noting technique, this would what we could call basic uh, type of Vipassana meditation. But using those notings is going to get in the way when you start developing the more advanced levels of uh, uh, rise and fall uh, of impermanence. 
So I hope that uh, makes it more clear. Now this next uh, question, can you please give more examples of un unshakable knowledge? Is that right at the deepest level of the Four Noble Truths? The insight knowledge of impermanence is present all the time, day and night. Uh, that, not necessarily. Uh, unshakable knowledge, though, is uh, uh, entering the stream, uh, at least on that first level. So that means your doubts are overcome. And that glimpse of the Four Noble Truths, you'll never forget it. And that is unshakable knowledge. You, you, you know, and you, uh, although it's not in front of your mind all the time. Now, only an arahant is going to have knowledge and vision basically pretty much present most of, all of present of the time in, in one degree or another, but not a sotapanna or even the level of a stream enter or uh, the once returning or the never returning. Only an arahant would be have that unshakable knowledge basically uh, with him all the time. But at least overcoming doubts and attaining the stage of the sotapanna is considered uh, unshakable knowledge in terms of the, the doubts are not going to shake you anymore. Uh, so, and uh, the un, un, and the complete faith in the Buddha Dhamma Sangha. No one could talk you out of that. Uh, so that that is you know the again, <laughs> everything that you read about or hear in the Dhamma, there's there's always different levels of it. You know, there's not just one level. There's there's the beginning level, there's an intermediate level, and then there's the advanced and final level, which is complete enlightenment. Uh, but most people are going to have to go through all these preliminary uh, stages before reaching that. Only a very few persons could uh, reach that <laughs> final stages, even just in a short you know, retreat or even, you know, most people take years and years of practice to reach the highest uh, level. Or some people take years and years even to reach the, the basic level. So it could take, take up even to seven lifetimes uh, to reach that unshakable level. Okay. So... Okay, let me see. Let's see. Uh, okay, this last one is, is a comment. Good in the beginning, good in the middle, good at the end. That's right. That's the Dhamma. That means when you first read the Dhamma, you get intellectual understanding, and that makes you happy. It's like, wow, I haven't heard this before. That's, wow, that's cool. You know, I want to check this out, you know, and it sounds good. The end of suffering, right? Enlightenment. So that sounds good in the beginning. And as you go on contemplating the Dhamma and developing mindfulness concentration, you reach the middle stages of basic insight knowledge and uh, the that uh, Chintamaya Panya. That's the middle level. It's, you know, it's good then too, or even better. And then when you reach the final stages of, you know, the, you know, entering the stream and those higher levels, then, and especially the arahant level, that's uh, the, it's uh, good in the end. So everywhere you look, the the dhamma can bring you joy, if you know how to contemplate. If you're contemplating with the the proper attitude. Okay. So friends. Uh, 
that seems to be the last of the questions. So I, we're also getting uh, on in the time. So we're going to uh, stop this discussion now. Remind yourself of sifti, sifti, just quite a few different sensations, maybe buttocks, legs, or feet. Remind yourself of the present moment of sitting. Or feel your hands and fingers touching together or they touch your legs. And just keep reminding yourself of Sipti, Sipti. Feel the weight of the arms hanging from the shoulders. Feel where the clothing touches the skin of the shoulders, arms, or chest. All those sensations are just material sensations, the aggregate of form. If they feel unpleasant or pleasant or neither, then that's the feeling of them. Feelings are sensations, sensations are feelings. And now feel your head balanced on top of the neck. Feel the sensations on the face, skin stretched over the front of your skull. Feel some little prickly sensations on the face. Feel the lips touching together. If you can feel the tongue inside the mouth, where the tongue may touch the teeth. And just remind yourself of Sipti, Sipti. Feel the eyes of the socket and the eyelid is stretched over the eyeball. Try to feel the subtle eye movement. Sort of gazing on the eyeballs with inner gaze of a web. Awareness is actually like an inbuilt video camera. You can kind of watch the sensations in the body. From that point behind the eyes, open the lens of that awareness, feel the outline of the sifting body, 
a general sense of the head on top, shoulders and arms, the middle buttocks, feet underneath, the clothing touching the skin. Should be able to feel that outline of the body and the different sensations quite easily. Just hold that outline of the body in the mind's eye, the, the third eye, the mind's eye, the eye of awareness. And just remember sit Begin some deep, slow breathing like we did during the yoga exercise. Try to take a few seconds to expand the abdomen, rib cage, and up to chest. Holding the air in the lungs two or three seconds. Allow the oxygen to get into the bloodstream. And feel the last bit of air go out of the lungs and go out through the Take several more deep, slow breaths like that, cultivating this basic mindfulness. Breathing in, letting go of the past and future. Breathing out, sitting here and now. Breathing in, letting go of the past and future. Breathing out, sitting here and now. Breathing in, feeling the whole body. Breathing out. Feeling the whole body. Now we're going to count the breaths from one to ten to develop a more continuous concentration on the breathing. You can continue to take the deeper, slower breaths and help you to concentrate. With the next expanding in breath, mentally count to one. Hold the air in one or two seconds. And with the contracting out breath, mentally count to one. The next in breath, two. Out breath. In breath three, out breath three, in four. In five, out five, in six. Out six in 
27. Out 7. In 8. In nine out nine in ten. I'll discontinue the counting. Let your breathing return to its uncontrolled, shorter, irregular rhythm. To continue to feel it. Let the attention focused on the center of the body to feel the residual, expanding and contracting sensation. Clothing rub against the skin of the stomach, rib cage, your chest, and expand and contract, making all those changing sensations. Focus of your concentrated awareness. So knowing when the breath is coming in, and knowing when the breath is going out. You know it by feeling it, by feeling the sensation. To help you stay focused, you can use these mental remembers. It helps you to remember. In in sitting, out, out, sitting, between the in and out breaths, just feel and remember sitting body, in, in, sitting, out, out, sitting. Just over and over and over again, breath by breath, moment by moment. In, in, sitting. Out, out, Let your thoughts come and go in the back of the mind. Just keeping the feeling of sensations of the breathing body in the front of the awareness. So all those sensations and feelings of the material vibrations, these aggregates and forms, Material vibrations caused by cellular interaction. Some of those sensations may feel painful or feel pleasant. They're just breathing of neutral sensations. Some of the feeling tone of material vibration. So the 
just as those sensations are always changing, these feelings are also changing with time. two aggregates. And contemplating the breathing body and practicing the mindfulness of the body and by feeling the sensation you can practice in the mindfulness of feeling. Just contemplating how they're all changing. Contemplation of impermanence. occurring right there in the awareness. The body sensing present moment awareness. Good feeling of that, then you can also recognize the concentrated mind. And if any thoughts overrunning your mind, then the unconcentrated mind. Out, out, sitting. Sensations coming and going. Feelings coming and going. coming and going. And maintaining that connection to the present moment, the breathing body. The breathing body is the natural connection to the present moment. Only when you've established that that real meditation can take place, or at least the vipassana meditation takes place. In in sitting. hindrances arise, you can just notice that, and ill will arises, and the sensual desire arises, if mind is sleepy, mind is restless.
back to in in out out Turning up the power of the mental microscope and see how each breath is different, longer or shorter. Sometimes you feel it in the abdomen, sometimes you feel it in the rib cage or upper chest. Sometimes the in breath is longer than the out breath. The out breath is longer than the in breath. It's always changing. If you notice those changes, it means you reach the deeper level of awareness. So many thoughts as you come back and take more deep, slow breaths by being concentrated in the body. subtler, finer detailed sensations in the breathing body process. So many different little sensations coming and going. Prickly sensations, itchy sensations. Painful feelings, pleasant feelings.
you will concentrate it and having good awareness, not too many wandering thoughts. Contemplate the five aggregates of the six senses. And you identify the five aggregates. This is material form. This is feeling. This is perception. This is mental activity. This is consciousness. Even if thoughts arise in your mind, that's the ego consciousness. Turning up the power of the mental microscope. See how quickly the sensations aggregate the arising and vanishing. Not only in the body, but in sounds. Things that might be going on in the room. Sounds, smells. going through the mind. Always coming back to maintain that connection with the breathing body. All those feelings, sensations, thoughts, always coming and going through that breathing body awareness. Breathing in six things, breathing out six things, sensations come and go, pleasant, painful, neutral feelings come and go, perceptions, thoughts, ideas come and go, sounds come and go. Thoughts of I, me, and mine come and go. We know this the continuous flow of impermanence of the five aggregates of the six senses, coming and going, arising and vanishing. Through the space of awareness, just beneath all of that, coming and going and mental chaos is the parallel dimension that 
present moment awareness of the now. No clinging, identification, no reaction to any of these five aggregate six sense phenomena. We react, we chase them, we lose that connection to the present moment. We get lost in past and future thinking. But natural present moment awareness is always there, literally just beneath the skin. instant connection to the present moment.
our thoughts or perceptions arise based on that sound, sound contact. Mind jumping to the future. Sadly, Sankara Anichati Yadapanyaya Pasati. Atani bindati dukti is a maglu visu jiya dukkha patta chani dukkha baya patta chani baya sokka patta chani sokka hon tu sabeti pani all conditioned things the five aggregates this body mind and the world are impermanent we arise only to briefly last and vanish. When one sees this with the eye of wisdom, one becomes disenchanted with suffering. This is the path to purity and freedom. And may the suffering be free from suffering. May the fear struck be free from fear. May the grieving be free from grief. In this way, may all beings live with mindfulness and wisdom. And thus spoke the Buddha. Finish this meditation. I invite you to join in chanting the word sadhu three times. Slowly, we do the chanting on a long out breath. Try to feel those vibrations in your body and mind. So take a deep breath. Place your hands at the edge of your knees. Take one more deep breath. As you're breathing in, stretch your head back and pull against your hands. Holding the knees and arch the lower spine. Hold it a few moments. Feel those sensations. And lift the head up and on an out breath, press the chin to the top of the chest to stretch the neck vertebra. And lift the chin up level on an in breath. Relax on the out breath. Put a smile on your face. So friends, this uh, brings our 
the Dhamma searing to an end, the opener of everything. Have a peaceful meditation or get some insights. We can clear up any lingering questions or doubts about uh, whether the mindfulness, what are the four foundations of mindfulness, what is insight knowledge. Of course, all that takes time. Anyway, I wish you all the best for continuing your meditation during the week. And uh, we'll see you this next week, same time, same place, over Zoom. And uh, I'll mail out the, uh, in the topic for next week's session, which probably, hopefully by Friday, or no, uh, by Sunday. Okay, so until then, mindfulness today keeps dukkha away, and uh, namo buddhaya. Namo buddhaya. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Mangalam, Bhante. thank you so much. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you, Bonte.